Yo, it's your boy DC Tree, and this is DC Tree Ass Nation, the channel on YouTube that covers hoops and heroes. And today we're talking hoops, talking about San Antonio Spurs, y'all. And if you notice, man, I have been a little quiet this week because the Spurs are winning. <laughs> I am not thrilled about it, you know. And I wasn't gonna make this video because I could already feel the fake fans and all the stuff coming for me, you know, well, calling me a fake fan, but. I'm a fan, silver and black, true and blue, baby. But man, I gotta tell you, man, I do not wanna make that play in, like at all. And I know for some of y'all that's confusing. And I just made a video about that. I have that linked up a few days ago, just why I'm not excited about the play in or the possibility of the play in. Because to me, the play in is dangerous. It's dangerous, man. But Spurs fans, man, y'all just too damn thirsty right now. <sighs> y'all thirstier than on Jackie Chan was in Rush Hour 2. Oh, slow down, baby. What? And don't get me wrong, I get it, man. We are in a hella big drought, and it hurts. <laughs> But again, we got to look at the big picture, Spurs fan. We got to look at the future, man. We have a chance to get a really good pick and a solid draft, a good draft, man. Let's not botch that for a superficial play in win, y'all, man. We got to see the big picture, man. We got to see the big picture like Piccolo did that time when he merged with Kami. The Piccolo that you know is gone. <laughs> I am the Namek. So I had to make this video. It's not going to be a fan favorite. It's not going to be yelled at the mountaintops. But I had to make this video. Three reasons why playoff experience, that's the reason people are using for us to make the play in, why playoff experience is extremely overrated. Super overrated. But before I jump too deep into it, if you like my content, please sub to the channel, hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that bell for more videos. Thank you so much for the continued support. Okay, the first reason why I think it's overrated is because I don't think it's really going to help our guys get that much better. You know, don't get me wrong. There are some benefits of feeling that playoff intensity. There are benefits from having that, you know, having that experience under your belt. But that experience is more relevant for teams on the edge of greatness, on the edge of being contenders, on the edge of of you know making the playoffs deep in the playoffs every year you know that eighth seed that seventh seed like a team like the timberwolves that's number seven right now would benefit from playoff experience the spurs we're way out we're a lottery team man we're officially a lottery team you know we are getting lulled to sleep by the tournament by the tournament which i'm glad the nba added that but that's lulling us to sleep man Yo, five years ago, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have sniffed the playoffs, sniffed it. And that would have been right. That would have been justified, man. And because the Western Conference has taken a massive dive, because I remember the days where 50 win teams were like six, seven in the West. That was crazy. Now you got teams like the Clippers, number eight. That's not even really 500 like that. So. Let's cut the malarkey out, man. Like this isn't, we, the playoff experience, it does have its benefits, but it's not gonna help us that much. Not as we are currently constructed, it won't. The second reason why the playoff experience argument doesn't make sense is because really and truly, our team is not set. Our team is in flux, man. You know, we just had major trades, Forbes, White, we trying to work Primo in there. We got Josh Richardson, he's hooping. I gotta make a video about that. So you gotta make a decision, you know, um, are we gonna keep him, are we gonna trade him, are we gonna resign him? I gotta check out his contract information. And then you got Lonnie, you know, he's restricted. Are we gonna, you know, match the deals he may get? You know, someone may overpay him. Are we gonna try to overpay him a little bit? Or are we gonna let him walk? You know, our team could very well look very different next year. And the Spurs have three first round picks. You know, 
in the um in the draft. And as much as I love Dejounte Murray, the Spurs, I'm pretty sure if a guard or a point guard come their way, they're gonna pick the guard because they love guards. They love just loading this team up with guards. So man, we don't know what our team is gonna look like next season. So why are we so focused on playoff experience if a lot of the guys, the key guys, aren't gonna be here? You see what I'm saying? Of course, we still gonna have Primo. Of course, we'll still have Vassell and Murray. I doubt that they're going anywhere. Keldon going anywhere. That's not necessarily what I'm saying, but we don't even have a set 10 man rotation that can grow together as of yet. And the third reason why it's overrated, and you probably saw this coming, is that it's a risk. You get what I'm saying? Like the Spurs, you know, if they get into the play in, all they have to do is win two games. You telling me our young guys can't get hot enough to win two games? Now, don't get me wrong. I've said this before. They should be playing hard every night. They should be trying to win every game. They should be scrapping. Dude, if we win both games and become the eighth seed, we are going to miss out on a lottery pick. They have us projected of having either the seventh or the eighth pick, the 17th pick, and, you know, I think like the 29th pick, and then like 42nd pick in the draft. Dude, we go from having a top 10 pick, number eight, to drop into number 17, dog. That's not worth it, man. That's not worth it for a first round exit. Not not in this juncture of the of the game, man. Not in this juncture of our development. Not in this juncture for the organization. We have to remember who we are and who we are not. And what we do not do is that we do not draw free agents, man. We depend heavily on the draft to make things happen. So this is no different, man. And everyone talks about the odds. The odds are slim to get a top four pick. The odds are slim to get the first pick. I don't care if the odds are .001 is greater than making the eight seed and not having no odds at all. You got a 25% chance, 26% chance to have a top four pick in a legit draft, man. That is an opportunity you cannot pass up on. Don't get me wrong, man. I love the development of these guys. Murray has taken the leap. Lonnie has taken the leap. Vassell's getting taken the leap. You know, um, Primo is still learning. I'm rooting for these guys, and I know it would mean a lot to them to make it to the playoffs. I get that. But as a fan on the outside looking in, and I'm not part of the team, I got to be honest with myself, and I got to be honest with you guys. You know, if they make it to the play-in, I can't 100% get hype for them winning. Like, I just can't. Like, is it going to be a part of me that's going to love seeing them to compete and I'm rooting for them to win, but it's that logical side of me that's like, man, I really want that number eight pick. And again, it could turn out to be nothing. It, the pick could flop. You know, I've heard that. Of course, that's a possibility, but we're just trying to increase our chances to get better as quickly as possible. That's all this is about. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Let me know in the comment section if you agree with me. Let me know if you disagree with me, man. I'm curious to see your point of view on this topic, man. All right, guys, check out the other videos in the channel, and I will catch you in the next one. Hey.